Hello, my dear friends. Best greetings from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Furso. I'm a research entomologist. I'm a beekeeper and teacher. And I am a researcher. I'm studying parasitic calcid wasps. And these calcid wasps are on this poster behind me. Here they're pretty big. You see about 15 centimeters in size. But originally, these parasitic wasps, they're very small from half of millimeter up to maybe 10 millimeters. The biggest of one. A common size about one millimeter and they belong to the order Hymenoptera. Who is Hymenoptera order? You can check the book of Holt and Bolton. The Hymenoptera, so about Hymenopterous insects. And these are solitary and social bees, solitary and social wasps, bumblebees, ants, so, so flies and parasitic wasps of different superfamilies. So you see here over 400 pages of this book. So it's what not 30 minutes, not enough to see even just only titles of some chapters. But today I will show you some parasitic wasps of a very small size on video. So you can see them on your own eyes, how they are acting, because they are parasitoids. They are parasitic wasps. They are not predaceous wasps. They are not hunting on their prey, on their meal, on their food and bringing it to the nest. So, or just parasitizing and making a nest inside. They are parasitizing the specific host, which is their meal. And their parasitoids, they are feeding on host organism, on host insect, or maybe another organism, e feeding on it, eating it, and finally, Host is dying, so that's why they called parasitoids. Parasitoids instead of parasites, which are feeding on host organism, and organism is not dying. Like, for instance, some nematodes, some ascarids, worms while living inside some animals, and this organism is just weakening, has some diseases, becoming very weak, but not dying. But where? looking for parasitoids in order Hymenoptera in the superfamily Calcid wasps Calcida idea. And I will show you some other Hymenoptera insects together because sometimes parasitoids have a very special behavior. They can be so solitary, they can be regular parasitoids. They can be in one host can develop only one larva of parasitoid or can develop many parasitoids. So parasitoid will be gregarious. And also it can be multi-parasitism. In one host, several parasitoids of different species can lay eggs. And also some other features of biology. In some cases, female is laying eggs inside host. Just only one few or several eggs. And these eggs are just developing in many embryos. So this case of a polyembryonism, when one egg is given just the birth to several individuals, not only several, but many individuals, like female of the family inserted is laying eggs inside caterpillar, and inside caterpillar from one egg can develop up to 100 individuals like clones inside the body of caterpillar. And I will show you these clones on video. And also some others from a super family Ichneumonidae and family Braconidae. Let's start from the beginning to watch our videos. These videos were kindly given to me and I have permission to show them from the Japanese entomologist Dr. Kazo Takagi and I appreciate his kind help and permission to show these videos for educational purpose. And first video will be about Baraconida developing inside caterpillar. So this will be green caterpillar of Pieride family. White fly, white butterfly. You see green caterpillar inside caterpillar. We're developing several individuals, several white larvae were growing, growing very quickly. And after their growth, they're leaving the body of caterpillar, just 
and pupating outside by making cocoons outside and from these cocoons will hatch parasitoids and caterpillars die and these are parasitoids of family Braconidae, super family Ichneumonidae. So this is big white cocoon like a cotton inside many small cocoons and from each cocoon just one individual of Braconidae just hatched. So but together maybe 20-30 specimens of genus Habrobracon can emerge. Many species are belonging to the same genus and caterpillar is definitely dying because of this behavior of parasitoids. But surprisingly, they are primary parasitoids by living on the host caterpillar. But there are secondary parasitoids which are living on this primary parasitoid. You see here, yellow cocoons, these cocoons of a genus Habrobracon. Yes, they just emerged larvae image from a caterpillar, made cocoons, and these cocoons were found by another parasitoids, these small calcid wasps of genus Pteromalus, family Pteromalidae. And these Pteromalidae, each one just parasitized one cocoon of Habrobracon genus, and so many individuals again emerged from the same group of cocoons. And practically just when only few have not been parasitized. Only few. Majority of cocoons with primarily parasitoid, braconid parasitoids were parasitized. But there are also some tertiary parasitoids. On this secondary parasitoid, there is opportunity that another braco another pteromonid wasp can lay eggs and develop inside the secondary parasitoid. And also parasitoids can attack not only caterpillars of the larvae, they can attack eggs of insects. These are parasitoids of Platygastride proctotropoid family. These are eggs of lacewing, I guess, lacewings. And each inside each one we have just with this is a small white white top. This is for briefing. And this is in, on the left side, big opening. So after the emergence of this black, black parasitoid, which is sitting here and cleaning it him, itself. Because after emergence, the most important part to clean all smell, all dust from the body. So that's why parasitoid is sitting and grooming, cleaning very carefully, antenna, head and the body before flying away. So these are eggs of insects. And for example, another parasitoid also search for eggs of bugs, Hemiptera. So you see here, these are like a cups. These are cups of bugs, Hemiptera order. And this parasitoid also is sitting and grooming. Also just hatched from, from this Interesting, surprising, like a can, like a jar. But this is egg or bug. Probably Muridi family or other families. So this is a parasitoid of family Pteromalide. Also it's grooming, cleaning first pair of legs. And first pair of legs is used like, like a dog or just second pair of legs is very useful for cleaning body and also cleaning the wings from the dust. And each small dust piece must be removed before searching for host, for new host, for finding new host is important to be very, very clean. And as I told about caterpillar, in some cases, parasitoids attacking caterpillar. And what's, <coughs> what's that? This is caterpillar, but dead caterpillar. And this dead caterpillar is humified, became dry, dry and like dead. Yes, dead caterpillar. But inside this dead caterpillar, you see many individuals, someone is coming out of caterpillar. 
These are small parasitoids of family Ansertidae. So they're catching from caterpillar. Inside caterpillar we're making hole, emergence holes and coming out. Inside all this whole caterpillar developing more than 100 specimens of Ansertidae parasitic wasps. Caterpillar may have a size about 3 centimeters, very big one. But parasitoids is just only one centimeter, one, only one millimeter size. And you see how they emerge, they are crawling in, around. All of them were just uh, emerged. You see so many calcid wasps. Why they're here? Because they hatched, they hatched from the body of a mummified caterpillar. Caterpillar died, but gave the birth to so many individuals of parasitic wasps of a family Ansertidae. Over the 100 individuals of Ansertidae emerged from such a big caterpillar about 2 cm size. All of them were alive, they are mating, and then they are searching again for caterpillar. And maybe just only one female or one, two females can parasitize the whole caterpillar and give the birth for whole generation like here inside. Probably all these insects were just clones of one female which parasitized about one month before the caterpillar which is inside this glass jar. And they are developing inside the caterpillar parthenogenetically, parthenogenetically. And this process of multiplying embryos is called par parthenogenesis and polyembryonism. Polyembryonism. So this is polyembryony parasitism. Polyembryony parasitism. When from one egg many embryos are developing. Very interesting parasitism in the family Aphelinidae. On the top, this is moving parasitoid female of Aphelinus genus. Aphelinus genus attacking here aphid or, or small scale. This is aphid. But female is not attacking just directly with ovipositor. Initially, fem female is searching for host for its prey. Understanding that this is correct prey when just turning around Turning again, wings on the top of abdomen, and then just putting ovipositor inside the body of aphid for laying egg, and laying egg inside the body of this very fat and very mm, fluid sometimes aphid to be for protection. Female is closing the wings on the body. You see, again, turn around, turn again, win, and then just put in ovipositor inside. This is very special behavior for genus Aphelinus in the family Aphelinidae. Again, turning back to the caterpillar, we see, can watch another caterpillar, which is parasitized by Eulophidae family, Eulophidae calcid wasps. The ectoparasitoids, you see caterpillar again died, not moving already, but on the top, on the body of this caterpillar, several interesting larvae attached. White larvae, they are parasitic larvae, parasitoids. They are not coming from inside the body, but they are sitting on the body of caterpillar and sucking the prey of caterpillar. And these are these are larvae of family Eulophidae, probably genus Elahertus. They are just ectoparasitoids developing on the body of host, on the surface of host. Just growing gradually, moving a little bit on the body of host, but host is gradually dying, like this caterpillar. And then parasitoids, larva, can move a little bit out of host and making can make a cocoon, making cocoon, and inside cocoon pupate. 
Cocoon sometimes can be very tough, very strong, but in some cases Cocoon is very simple, with, with like a small mesh around pupa. Which individual we have more? Okay. Just a minute, we check new video. Just removed. So this is these are ectoparasitoids. Let's let's try to watch new video from my archive from the library. And next parasitoid will be again egg parasitoid as I showed yesterday. In my yesterday stream I showed some egg parasitoids family Trichogrammatidae, which are parasitoids of some aquatic bugs and aquatic beetles. So you see here this white sausage here a little bit extra light, but this like a sausage on a screen, this is egg of aquatic beetle, Dytiscus family. Dytiscus family, Dytiscidae family, genus Dytiscus. An egg about 10 millimeters size, and you see some small parasitoids just hedging, coming out of this cocoon. But this is not cocoon, this is transparent egg removed from the plant. So these are parasitoids of genus Perstwichia and they have a very special behavior. They're sitting here, okay, in petri dish, in petri dish, but also inside water. So these eggs and all insects, they're sitting inside water because they are aquatic parasitoids. So they hatched an old duck Pieces inside the egg, these are very tiny, about one millimeter, males and females. On the down part of the egg there is a male without wings, and on the top of the egg there is a female with little bit visible, like a small stick on the top of the body. This is a female with wings. And these insects they are moving inside the water easily and swim inside the water. And the one is hatching just from the hole, this process of emergence. Some individuals making a hole in egg and all others were just hatching out, just emerging out, coming out one by one, because they need to find a little bit more space for mating and females, they need to find new host to make a new generation. And you see on the right side of the egg, just a big adults inside this sausage, inside this egg. These are bigger, these are females and small one. On the right side, this is a male. And females can be of different size, because in this one big sausage, but there is not enough food for all individuals, so some of them are growing a little bit bigger and others smaller. So we have a kind of variation in size between different individuals. So we're crawling on the egg because we feel something pretty good for another. And here the same egg, but another small picture. Again, we're moving inside. Egg is transparent, so like inside the skin, like transparent skin. Where a male and a female were mating inside, on the right part of screen invisible, but something move, what is kind of movement inside the egg, like inside the bottle. But these are males, several males were trying to mate with female inside the egg, inside this funny cocoon. And after mating, Female is just living egg through the hole. So it's such a s funny, interesting, very spe specific behavior of this parasitoid. Okay, next one. Next one coming from our archive. 
Next one is belonging to family Eupelmide. Eupelmide, very elongated body, and here male and female just communicating, communicating left side probably. Female and right side male. So male is active and just coming on the female and mating. So you see here some chemical communication and also communication using winds. It's all, all, the, all the time parasitoids we use communication with antenna. We're communicating with antenna between male and female and also using winds flap, flapping around the body of female. So you see body is opening abdomen and male is coming for mating. This is a mating process of a fem Eupelmus, or family Eupelmidae. Which are parasitoids of eggs of some insects and also parasitoids of some larvae or different beetles, for instance. We have a very large variety of different 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 hosts. All right, here some interesting parasitoid of a bigger size. This parasitoid also quite small, about one millimeter just. Only one millimeter, Eupilmida maybe two millimeter size. But now we have parasitoid bigger size, about five millimeters. But very strange, very robust, so pretty strong. And with big hind wing or hind legs, like a very thin, not thin, but thick, very strong hind legs, which are used for jumping. They are belonging to family. Calcidide, calcidide. Many of them were parasitoids of pupae of different moths. And even some chrysalis can be easily collected if you can collect chrysalis of a daily butterfly somewhere in orchard, on fence in your garden. Some chrysalis of of chrysalis of daily butterflies will be parasitized and from chrysalis will hatch in springtime not the butterfly but this kind of parasitoid and size about seven millimeters long to see this calcidida family better i show you another individual of same family i have another individual in my video collection which I kindly got from Dr. Takagi. You see again, Calcidida is sitting, such turned, such very special shape of a hind legs on the left part of screen, strong, robust shape of body. And if you touch with brush or just with forceps, this individual usually not running, not simply running and flying, but usually jumping. So family Calcidida, mostly parasitoids of pupae of different butterflies and night moths. Okay, maybe the last but not the least. I can show you individual of a family. Which one? Which one? I have a collection of many. The most interesting. Most interesting one, the most unique one. This parasitoid is the smallest one among all insects. You see black spot, black and brown spot on the left side, this is parasitoid. And this white one is thrips. Thrips was just crawling around. Thrips is size one millimeter. And left side, this is a parasitoid. You see again, thrips was coming. 
Who is that? Again, I re repeat the picture. On this picture we see, in the center this is a tiny parasitoid. What size? Size about 0.3 millimeter. 0.3 millimeter and trips, second trips is coming. 1 millimeter size. And parasitoid is coming 0.3 millimeter with wings and very tiny antennae crawling around. And again, thrips is coming. Big one, like an elephant. So, in comparison with thrips, parasitoid is really very small. And look, and tiny thrips of one millimeter looks like a big elephant. Again. And this is parasitoid of family Trichogrammatidae, genus Megaphragma, the smallest insect in the world. Smallest one, 0 0.3 millimeter, or approximately 0 0.26. And thrips is about one millimeter. You see here some setter on this, on the stem of a plant, and parasitoid is searching for eggs, searching for eggs of thrips, because these type of thrips, they are laying eggs inside plants, inside leaves, inside stems. Tiny small parasitoids of 0.3 mm size are searching for eggs and parasitizing eggs of this host, Tisanoptera order, or in English, thrips, tiny sucking insects, thrips. So, this is a unique video of behavior of searching parasitic egg parasitoid of thrips, searching for eggs. And here trips is coming like big elephant. That's probably I have more video for sure, but you need to have something in the stock for our next videos because otherwise we will make a repetition of some videos. I have more, but don't be annoying and just repeating the same same videos from time to time. Better to search for new videos and new objects, new insects, new parasitoids in our next stream. Thank you for your attention. I hope you have been surprised by some insects. I guess so. You have never seen insect of size 0.3 millimeter on screen. It's practically invisible like microbe. Uh, it's not a virus, but like a very tiny microbe. They are visible under the microscope under the binocular microscope, when they are collected it by different methods, in yellow pen traps. Uh, it's possible to put special yellow plates with water and with shampoo under the plants and some very tiny parasitoids of one millimeter, half millimeter, and even 0 0.3 millimeter size. Insects can come in small yellow pen traps and also even in malaise trap, in America traps yellow pond traps and in Malay traps. Under the microscope, if you search for alcohol samples with insects, 0.3 mm visible under the microscope, but you must be very careful searching for wings with hairs. So the megaphragma, which is not indicated here on the screen, here all the insects, they have not, so only here the genus Mimaridae, Genus Mimar has so hairy wings, same hairy wings like in genus Megaphragma. Megaphragma has a very hairy wings and size 0 0.3 millimeter. My last video, video of Dr. Takagi kindly given to us. Thank you him for his kindness. Because this is a really unique insect, it's quite difficult to search for this insect of size 0 0.3 millimeter and to catch it on video screen. Thank you for your attention. Write your comments and ask your questions. Visit my Patreon page, becoming my donator and my patron. And see you next time. See you in next stream this week, if we have electricity, hopefully, because Ukraine is still in the war and electricity is sometimes a problem, even in city of Kyiv. But in front line, Ukrainian militaries, Ukrainian forces are fighting for freedom and independence of Ukraine. That's why welcome. We can say, we can say, do not come to Ukraine without permission, because Ukraine is forever. Good luck and see you soon on my channel.
Ukraine is forever. Good luck. Welcome to my channel. Subscribe, press like, and welcome to be my patron. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Bye-bye.